What's up, YouTube? I'm Dr. William Manhood, grandfather and senior relationship advisor. And I want to thank everyone who subscribed to this channel. I really appreciate you. But YouTube is telling me that 75% of you that view my channel regularly have not subscribed. Please help me continue to, to uh, produce this content by hitting the subscribe button right now. It won't cost you anything. It's, it's really free. And I know it's annoying to get those notifications, so you don't have to hit the notification bell if you don't want to but please subscribe. Now, I also need you to tell me what you think about the content by making comments and hitting either the like or dislike button. And see, the more you tell me what you like or don't like, the better the content will be. All right, amen. Today's video is part two of my reaction to a video posted by Shizu Z titled, Why Women Bring Nothing to the Table, which is his reaction to a video posted by Steph is Cold. Now, my part one reaction to Shizu's video is directed at the assertion that women bring nothing to the table and why some guys have come to that conclusion. And of course, there are level up bag hags out here that appear to want to get with want to get with nothing to give except sex. Now, this video will attempt to help those women and the men who want to who want to bone them understand what women do bring to the table when their man knows how to set the table. And brothers, if you have if you have a woman that doesn't know what to bring to the table, it's your fault. And why is it your fault? Let's talk about it. Brothers, what if women get off their high value man kick and started asking you plain old everyday brothers what you bring to the table? What would your answer be? Have you ever asked yourself why you want a woman? Is the reason you want a woman is to give you sex on demand or do you have a greater plan? What will you do with her when you get her and what will you expect her to do for you? All right. Now, whenever you buy a car, you will have to buy gas, right? However, you don't buy a car just to have, uh, a car just to have a reason to buy gas. You will need to buy gas if you want the car to take you where you want to go. But getting where you want to go is the purpose for buying the car, and gas is the fuel that you'll need to get there. Similarly, unbeknownst to guys in the real red pill community, a man drives a marriage, but it runs on the fuel of feminine energy. You don't get married just to harness feminist, feminine energy, but if you don't have any, the marriage won't go anywhere. See, marriage is a business, and the purpose of a business is to accomplish something, advance a greater cause, and contribute to society. Feminine energy is the fuel that you need to run the marriage business and help you achieve your mission, vision, and goals. The average person defines words like marriage and relationships from a personal point of view because they don't know that marriages and relationships impact the health and economy or economic viability of cultures and communities. The word relationship, for example, implies a goal or destination to reach wherein two people can relate to or agree to go together. And how can two go together or be married unless they agree? Now, whenever a marriage or relationship is not going anywhere, it's because the man has no goal or destination in mind other than doing what he does every day. And this man's life's plan is simply to see what happens and go with the flow. But his lack of vision, mission, objectives and goals leaves his wife with no sense of identity, direction, or security. Therefore, she will leave him shortly because the currency that she was born with naturally will cause her to flow to another man who understands how to utilize her value. When men don't know how to manage their marriages and relationships effectively, they fail frequently and their children have to live just above or just below poverty. Now, what do you bring to the table, okay? Before we move on, we have to set the dynamics that are required for every relationship and marriage to have long-term success. The first thing people must do is get rid of the unrealistic expectations about what they want out of the relationship, okay? The second thing both men and women must do is obtain a, mat a mature expectation of change. And you see, a, a woman will marry a man thinking that she can change him, but she can't, and a man will marry a woman thinking she won't change, but she will. Brothers, growth and change are in, in, in um, inherent characteristic of a woman and their bodies are built internally for growth and change so they can grow a whole human inside of them in nine months or less. And sister stability is an inherent characteristic in real men and see the foundation of a real man's character is spiritual and it is built on a rock deep inside of him. And this makes him steadfast, unmovable, and resistant to change. So women must understand if they want a real man to change, they will have to touch his spirit in order to move him. And brothers, when your wife wants you to make a change, 
as long as it doesn't take you off track from the vision and mission that you established for the family, you must let her have her way 90% of the time. And ladies, your husband is yielding to your need for change 90% of the time. That means that you must submit whenever he demands his 10%. In 2 Peter 3, 7, God, God said, um, God instructs men to love their wife according to knowledge. And that means that you have to come into the relationship armed with knowledge about women generally. Then you must have information about your woman, specifically her character, her strengths, weaknesses, knowledge, gifts, talents, and abilities, right? Otherwise, you'll try to deal with her like the last chick you was with and your relationship will fail because she's different, right? Now, dealing with her will be like trying to get orange juice out of an apple. You will be constantly disappointed and you will want to remove her from her appointment because you have no idea what's inside of her. When two individuals are thinking about getting married, they must both lay out what they want the other to bring to the table. And this is what I call setting the table with Fine China. Fine China is an acronym that stands for Formulation of Individual Needs and Expectations and Conducting High Individual Needs Assessment. See, most people have no problem formulating their individual needs and expectations, but in order to, to uh, conduct high individual needs assessment adequately so that it meets your needs as a couple or family, you will need some professional counseling and training. And this is why most couples attend premarital counseling, right? However, just for today, ladies, I'm going to give you a brief overview on the questions that you need to ask in order to effectively conduct your needs analysis to find out what your husband will expect from you if the marriage is not going smoothly. See, you conducted your husband's individual um, needs analysis correctly if you have learned the answer to these five questions, okay? Number one, what are your husband's goals? Number two, what must change for him to meet these goals? Number three, what knowledge, information, or skills does he already have? And number four, what knowledge, information, or skills does he need? And number five, what product or service must be purchased in order to close the gap? Now, whenever a man begins to feel like his marriage is in trouble, he develops the four types of needs, all right? Um, and so, so this is not what some men do. This is what all men do, okay? If a simp tells you that he wouldn't develop these needs. It means that he's the type of guy who will let you walk up and down his back in your high heels, all right? And this is one of the ways you'll know whether or not you have a real man. See, the four types of need that a man will develop when he believes that his marriage is in trouble are called normative, comparative, expressed, and felt needs. Now, a normative need comes when a man believes that him and his wife are failing to meet the standards of normal couples. Comparative need arises when he sees, his couple, sees couples with uh, similar backgrounds that are doing better than they are. And an express need is where a man wants to say what must be done to fix it without argument. And a felt need is where he wants to uh, prior to prioritize, prioritize actions and efforts based on their importance to him. And ladies, this sounds selfish because it is selfish, but because these are needs, you must give it to him, okay? Or he will feel compelled to leave. And ladies, wants are different than needs. You can toy around with not giving a man what he wants, but unmet needs will cause a marriage to fail. Therefore, it's important for you to assess your man's individual needs and supply them so that he'll be pleased. And as they say on TV, but wait, there's more. And the following are the five primary needs that every, every real man must have met in order for him to be comfortable in his marriage. And so if you fulfill a man's needs in these five areas, respect, loyalty, support, trust, and peace, he will work as hard as he can to give you everything that you could ever want to need. Now, above all things, a man needs to know that his woman respects him, okay? Sisters, never marry a man that you don't respect. Disrespect can cause a guy to either leave you or kill you, all right? And red pill cats don't like to be shit tested, but you have to test a man at least once or twice to see if he behaves or see how he behaves under pressure. And if the pressure leads to violence or anger, then he is not respectable. And brothers, no man is just entitled to be respected. You get no respect, okay, if you are not respectable. You have to make the person viewing you respect able or able to respect you by what they see or view or what they know about you. Disloyal women crossfade, monkey branch, or play the something better game. Men need a woman that they can trust with their innermost secrets and who will not bring their name to shame. Now, I had to dump a woman who had just came out of an abusive relationship and I learned that her abuser was still coming around every now and then abusing her again. And I also learned that she had told him everything about me 
But when I asked her to tell me everything about him, she refused to tell me anything. So I had no idea who this guy was, where he lived, or what he looked like. So he could have walked up on me at any time. See, she showed me that she was more loyal to him than me. So I sent her right back to him. And women who are supportive are the type that men want to keep, all right? Being supportive makes women complimentary to a man, much like oil to an engine. Without the, the, uh, the oil, the engine will seize up, get hot, and burn out. And see, oil helps the engine run uh, smoothly and be efficient. So what if the motor oil decided that she doesn't want to be motor oil and refused to do what she was created to do? What if she decided that she wanted to be salad oil instead? And what if she decided that she wanted to be cooking oil? And what if she decided that she wanted to be used in ministry and be the oil that anoints people's heads? Well, like too many modern women, she is going to have a problem being wanted and, and accepted. See, no salad wants motor oil on it. So to soothe her manly pride and lessen the pain of rejection, she will have to conclude that all salads ain't shit. However, nobody wants their chicken fried in motor oil. Nobody wants their heads to be anointed with motor, motor oil. And when she comes into the kitchen of the church to be used, she discovers that motor oil isn't needed there. So she struggles to find someone to accept her for what she is. But the problem is she won't accept herself for what she is. See, she is trying to be something that she is not and was not created to be. Ergo, she becomes bitter because nobody wants her. If she would just be what she was created to be and execute her executed, uh, created purpose by keeping her husband's engine running smoothly, she would be accepted and protected. And depending on how well she understands her purpose and how agreeable she can be, a real man will recognize her value and pay a high price to acquire her. Ladies, I just described the difference between a masculine woman and a pick me. See, a pick me knows her created purpose and how to complement the vision, mission, and objectives of her husband. A pick me doesn't fight for the right to be equal, to stand uh, beside instead of behind and make joint decisions with her husbands. Sisters, this is why a pick me gets picked and masculine uh, chicks don't. A real man won't pick you because he knows that he will have to divorce you for fighting to be co-head of the family. You see, a real man understands that anything with two heads is a monster. A monster is a threat to the culture, family, and community, so it has to be killed. A real man has to kill his marriage with a woman who acts too much like a dude. And that's because two dudes make doo-doo, so there will always be some shit. A real man knows that he will have to divorce you due to all of the shit uh, that a dude chick will put him through. Now, a lack of peace generates frustration, anxiety, and diminishes productivity, which restricts the wealth or money flowing into a family. Men receive physical and mental uh, restoration in an environment of peace. Therefore, they will need their wife to create a peaceful home environment. And sisters, good men bring five things to the table, okay? Power, provision, prosperity, protection, and peace. Now, if women want to get the power, provision, protection, uh, and, and um, prosperity, she has to reciprocate by giving him peace. Trust is difficult for a woman to deliver to a man due to her past relationships and current girlfriends. Women that constantly listen to their girlfriend who ain't got no man end up losing their husband. See, women that don't have a man can't stand to see their girlfriends with a man, so they love to talk about how all men cheat, so that keeps her friend from giving her husband trust and peace. Therefore, he will eventually leave. Now, a lack of trust produces chaos in a man's life because he cannot get complete access to his wife. See, she will withhold things that she needs, like support, loyalty, respect, and peace, because she doesn't trust him. And ladies, if you are constantly checking his wallet or fighting to get the passcode to his phone to see if he has numbers from other women, pretty soon he'll be gone. See, you already know that lack of trust is causing you to think that you have to end a relationship, so it will force your husband to start looking for another woman to cross fade to. Now, a woman that has learned how to be a wife has a number of assets and a tremendous amount of power that she was born with to bring to the table. And your job as her husband and the family leader is to identify what she has hidden inside of her so that she can uh, use it to help you fulfill your purpose. And see, she has um, 
If she has no inherent gifts, talents, and abilities that can help you fulfill your vision, then she has nothing useful to bring to the table. However, if you can see that she has assets that are useful, your job is to draw them out of her so that she can bring them to the table. And as I said, every woman is born with several assets and tremendous power. So if the woman that you choose appears to have nothing to bring to the table, guys, then it's your fault for not knowing how to draw it out of her. All right. Amen. Well, that's all that I have for now. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video with your family and friends, and I'll be back with something new that nobody told you. Until then, remember that God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, and I'll see you next time on Maximizing Fatherhood.